Hello friends, Adam here with FED. So today, as you can probably tell by what you're looking at on your screen right now, is we're talking about Fire Emblem Genealogy of the Holy War. Now, uh, whether or not I like this game is still, the jury's still out. <laughs> uh, but that doesn't matter for today's discussion. Today I want to talk about movement in Genealogy of the Holy War and uh, why it is such a polarizing thing. And to do that, we need to talk about the divide between mounted units, or units on horseback, and infantry units, or people that just use their feetsies to move around, you know? There are multiple factors in FE4 that really favor mounted units over infantry units. Uh, but before we, we get into any of that, I do want to talk about the one thing that infantry units do have over mounted units, and that is their stat line. Uh, infantry units generally just have better stats. Generally. I mean, there's some exceptions like Sigurd, Selif, uh, I don't know, Ares. <laughs> just units that are really powerful and like have a bunch of holy blood and stuff. Uh, but for the most part, mounted units are going to have lower stats than your infantry units. Uh, like just like taking a look at like Ira and like Jamka or Jamki, however you say his name anymore, I don't even freaking know. And then comparing them to units like, you know, Finn, who is honestly has really good, great stats for a Gen 1 cav unit. Or looking at like Noish, who is just like, they don't even come close to comparing. I understand they have lower stats and stuff, uh, but just in general, like here's like Ethlyn, her, her strength and whatever, just like doesn't even come close to what other units were doing. So, the what the, the, the infantry units are doing. So that's one thing they do have in their favor. But that doesn't mean a whole lot when you consider the enemy quality in FE4. So yeah, it's a troubadour, so but so they're like, expected to have bad stats. But then you have like a Lance Knight, level 13 Lance Knight. These stats are just abysmal. These aren't good. These are bad stats. Like, <laughs> the, you don't need the overkill uh, stats of an infantry unit here to take care of these enemies. You know, you got your Sigurds and your your Quans and your, your Lexes, your Finns. Units that are mounted have super high movement and can take out these terrible, like these like terrible enemies. These is like low, low quality enemies. And even the strongest among them, like the boss of the group, Zane, his stats aren't that impressive either. His scary thing is his 18 strength, which is admittedly pretty high for, uh, for, an, F for an FE4 enemy. And he's the Horse Slayer, which is effective against all your Cavaliers. But, I don't know, I would still feel comfortable sending Sigurd up against him to take him down, even though he has the Horse Slayer. It's like, whatever, you know? So enemy quality is super low, that does not help infantry units. Uh, because that doesn't allow them to take advantage of the one big thing they have, which is higher stats, generally. Now let's talk about why mounted units are considered better. The things that they have over infantry units. And that is, uh, number one, high movement, right? Like, look at that move range, it's huge, compared to Ira, right? Who is not a mounted unit. Insane. So, Ira, who's unpromoted, she's at 6 move. I don't think she get, she might gain a point of move on promotion for some reason I can't remember right now, but I don't think she does. So it's either 6 or 7 on promotion. Uh, and then you got Sigurd, who is counted as a promoted class with 9 movement. That's just a lot more, especially when you consider these massive 64 by 64 tile maps. That extra movement is going to make a huge difference over the course of playing through a map for 20 to 40 turns, you know? Big difference. Next, we have Kanto. So after a mounted unit performs an action, they can move again. Just easy as that. It's, it's busted. Uh, so, you know, we can attack this armor knight with Sigurd and then move up here or something. Whereas I would be stuck right here in like range of all these ballistas and stuff. There's just a lot more options when you can use Kanto. So, and Kanto, it was named Kanto in FE10, I believe. It just kind of stuck for the series. And we, I think that's what they call it again in... Uh, three houses even. So this is kind of what we retroactively call being able to move again after a performing actions in uh, FE4. So yeah, busted. Busted uh, mechanic that infantry units sadly don't get to take advantage of unless they have a special item called the Night Ring, which is they actually get at the end of this chapter, but there's only one of them. So it doesn't really like benefit enough. It's not a big enough, it's not a big enough advantage to say that the gap is closed is what I'm saying. All right, and finally, terrain favors mounted units. Terrain favors mounted units. Uh, so there are only a few types of terrain that you'll really need to, to worry about in FE4. 
You got uh, your forests or woods, it says there. Plains tiles, which are just like your generic, they cost one to move through. Road tiles, which take less movement to move through. And then, like down here is an example of sand or desert, which inhibits your movement uh, a fair amount. Actually, I don't think that sand does, but desert does in like chapter 5 and chapter uh, 7. Uh, there's desert that slows you down quite a bit. Uh, the same the same could be said for the, the forest or the woods. It slows you down quite a bit. Okay. So, all these terrains affect mounted units and uh, non-mounted units the same. Almost exactly the same across... Uh, both movement types and across all terrains. Except for, uh, I think, mountains. Uh, there's no mountains on this map to show. Actually, there are. There's mountains over here. Uh, mounted units uh, can only move through here if they have, like, uh, what is it? It's something like 9 move. I think you'd need to be promoted to move through mountains as a mounted unit. Whereas infantry units can move there. So that's, but that's a, such a rare case. The only part, place that really matters all that much is Chapter 4, uh, which is the, the snow map. But yeah, that's not going to affect your gameplay too much. Uh, but anyways, other things. The, 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 big, the big terrain advantage is road tiles. So road tiles are an interesting and like concept to, uh, to Fire Emblem that we don't see anywhere else except for this game. And that is, they take a less than one movement to move through rather than more movement, which more terrain. Usually is what the terrain changes. It's usually, it costs more stuff to like move through a forest. Whereas roads, they take about, uh, I don't know if this is like the, I don't know the exact math on it, but it's about 0.7% of your move, uh, percent of your move to move through a road tile. Uh, which essentially equates to getting a, about 30% extra move. So Sigurd, who has nine move, if we move him all the way through uh, road tiles, we get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, or 12. So he can move 12 spaces instead of 9 through road tiles. That's insane. Ira can move 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8. So she only gets plus like 2 extra movement for road tiles because of her, uh, her lower movement. And Sigurd gets plus 3. So that's just another benefit to mounted units. It's just, it increases the divide. It's not like it's a flat thing where it's like, oh, if you move on all road tiles, you'll get plus two movement. No, the higher your movement, the more movement you end up gaining from having these road tiles. Bust, busted, busted mechanic. Making mounted units even better. So, okay, how would I fix it? What would I change about these broken uh, mounted units in FE4? Or what would I change about the infantry units to make them more interesting to use? Now, I don't want to nerf anything too hard because nerfing isn't fun. Nerfing things just makes the game frustrating. Uh, so for the most part, I don't want to do that. Uh, but there are a couple things I want to add to infantry units to make them more interesting. So number one, I want them to be able to traverse on terrain that cavaliers cannot. I want them to be able to go through thickets. Uh, these darker green forest tiles that uh, no one can move through. Except for, I think there's a few classes that can. But none, none of our units can. Uh, that might be wrong, actually. I'm trying to think. I, I might be getting... I, I, I've been playing FE4 Binary recently, which changes everything. <laughs> so I might be getting confused. And the next thing I want them to be able to move over is cliffs. I want them to be able to use all of their movement to move one space onto a cliff. And that is taken directly from uh, FE4 Binary and also Berwick Saga, which is a great game on the PlayStation 2. Jap Japanese exclusive, but it's made by the guy who made Fire Emblem. Great translation patch was released recently. Go play it. Anyways, you can move on. I would want them to be able to move on cliffs, and it makes the makes this chapter in particular a lot more interesting, and makes them make them a lot better too. Uh, because at the beginning of this map, there are a bunch of bandits that come from this castle down to destroy these villages. And in vanilla FE4, regular FE4, to get to save any of these villages, you need to book your way over here with uh, like Sigurd and your mounted units, capture this castle. Which makes it so these units are even attackable, turns them red. Then you have to go all the way up here, all the way over here, all the way down here, all the way through the slowing move 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 slowing forest tiles to even have a chance of saving all these. And as you can see, I failed on this attempt to even save this to save one of the, the villages. And this is like the best one too. It gives the bargain ring, which saves you a lot of money. Whereas if you have the ability to move up clips like clips like you do in like FE4 binary, you are able to uh, send like Ira, Holen, Jamka, and Dew up here 
and get them up here so you can save your villages and it just gives them a special niche something like clever to do essentially and i really like that i want more of that in uh, FE, uh i want that in fe4 and hopefully they do something like that in an eventual fe4 remake and i said i didn't want to nerf cavaliers too hard or at all really but the only thing i think i would want to do is make it so it costs just a little bit of extra movement for them to move through planes tiles and make it so it doesn't affect infantry at all so make it so instead of getting nine moves, movement spaces or whatever through planes make it so it's like eight or seven so they still have the insane extra movement that road tiles offer but they lose a little little bit of move when you move off the road now i understand that's not necessarily like real or like i'm not striving for realism here i just want interesting gameplay and i feel like that would make uh infantry units a little more interesting it would give them a little niche generally there are roads everywhere you need to go but i think this could help infantry units stand out just a touch more anyways that's all i have for you thank you for watching guys make sure to subscribe for more fire emblem discussions like this one and also what do you think <laughs> how would you change uh mounted units or infantry units and their movement types in fe4 would you mess with terrain or whatever uh, and what would you hope for in an eventual remake to make infantry units more interesting to use uh, I think the big ones are what I said, and also just like raising enemy quality would make a big difference. Anyways, like, like and share the video if you wouldn't mind, and I'll catch you next time, friends.